Hey guys, it's been a while, I know. Um, so you're, if you're watching this, you're on my vlog channel uh, that I kind of started on the side where I was going to vlog a lot of the cool stuff that I do. And I've been vlogging a lot of it, but I couldn't figure out a good, coherent way to tell you the story of the days of the stuff that I've done. done going to Star Wars Celebration, doing things like that, hanging out with people, going off and having fun. I couldn't figure out a good way to actually tell you the stories. And so that's what's been stalling this channel. Uh, I'm not a vlogger, and I'm trying to learn how to be a vlogger. And I'm trying to make this entire channel kind of interesting for you. You guys now I'm still trying to figure that out and I'm, I'm kind of coming up with a way to tell the story of my day in the manner that you guys are used to in comic story and I actually saw a video where Casey Neistat didn't have a uh, coherent uh, like flow to his story so what he did was he sat there and said hey here's what happened next here's what was going on and I kind of liked that and I felt like it would be a good way to transition from how I do things on the comic story channel to doing the vlogs over here if I did it in more of a I'm telling you the story of the adventures we have so I'm gonna try that this weekend in Chicago with Rob uh, me and Rob from Comics Explained are going over there to do a panel. We're going to show off some of our new projects that we're doing, and we're going to be joining Valiant in a lot of their stuff, and we're going to be doing that. But since I have made you guys wait, I think about a month, I figured I might as well at least start making these videos where I just answer your generic questions. And the first question that everyone likes to ask is questions about my time in the military. So I figured today I would tell you guys how I broke both of my ankles twice, because it's actually kind of funny to an extent. <laughs> uh, but how I broke both my ankles twice, which is what led to, after nine and a half years in the military, me getting out on a medical retirement, which is which is what I got out on, which is why if you've seen some of the older videos in which we were discussing revenue on the Comic Story channel, I have a check coming in from the VA that's uh, like I'm kind of set because of that, which is why the priority of Comic Story is to make sure the employees get paid. Anyway, I thought I would tell you guys how I broke them twice and what's going on and my disastrous story of getting healed and fixed in my ankles. So let's go ahead and go all the way back to 2005. 2005, I joined up in the military. Now, I wasn't in a good place at the time when I joined the military, and I pretty much signed up to join the, uh, to join the infantry and immediately get deployed to Iraq. I... Like I said, wasn't in a good place. Um, I was in college. I wasn't able to pay the loans. I was trying to work three jobs to pay the loans. I got in a car accident. The car accident ended with me not having any transportation to go to the three jobs that I was at. I was delivering pizzas at night. I was uh, bagging groceries early morning. And I was managing a GameStop on the side over in Rhode Island. That's what I was doing. Uh, I was the assistant manager at that time. I believe so. It's, it's been like 15 years, guys. But anyway, I was doing these three jobs and going to school around all of it. So it, what ended up happening was I crashed the car and I had no plan. And I did not want to turn into one of those people that had insane debt while they were in college. So I was like, all right, I'm going to join the military. I'm gonna. The military is saying they're going to pay for my way through. Um, and what I'll do is I'll make the maximum amount of money that I can make while I'm in the military. Now, to make the maximum amount of money you want to make in the military, you want to be deployed. Because a lot of people know this, but if you're in the U.S. military and you deploy overseas, you don't pay taxes in the U.S. So, you might make a total of $25,000 that year, but you won't pay taxes on it. Now, what they don't tell you is that you have access to Amazon and shipping, and they can you can buy a lot of things over there. So, you don't actually walk away with $25,000 unless you just don't spend a dime. And I, I get way too bored for that. But that, that's another story about me spending way too much money in Iraq and Afghanistan. But anyway... So I joined the military and I ended up going into the uh, into uh, going to basic training. And the last week, so the, the, so anyone who knows the military knows that we they love to run, and I, I've kind of picked it up. It's not a, one of my favorite workouts, but I do it a, a, a three or four times a week. Um, but they love to run, and they love to run at 4 a.m. when you can't see anything, like you can't see anything at all. What are you supposed to do? So it's 4 a.m., I'm half asleep, I'm running it down this road in the pitch black, and it's a road full of potholes. So I'm going through it, and I fell in the hole. And the hole was pretty sizable. Completely rolled my ankle, and uh, I had to be literally carried off of the run to go to the, to the uh, uh, sit call. That's all it was. It, they call it sit call, and you basically go see like a low-level doctor who gives you like a basic uh, diagno diagnosis, and then he just lets you go. So I show up at the, the sick call area and I'm like, hey, I rolled my ankle, it really hurts. And the doctor looks at it and he goes, okay, you may have done serious damage, but we can just say that you've sprained it and you can graduate and go to your duty station. And there you can get proper treatment on your ankle. 
So I was like, okay, uh, that sounds like a good idea because if you've been in basic training, the other option if you injure yourself at the end is you have to stay there until you're 100% healed. Now, just because you graduated does not give you special treatment. You don't get special treatment. You are literally just supposed to lay in your bed for eight to 12 hours, no TV, no books, no nothing that you're able to do. I think they may have changed it now. This is 2005. We were still the rough and tough military, but you would literally just had to lay there and that was it until you were healed up. And I'm like, I am gonna go insane. I cannot do that. I cannot just lay in bed until I heal. So he's like, if you just push through it, we'll give you a crutch. You can graduate um, and you're good. But the problem was in order to graduate, I still had to do the final ruck march. Now I don't remember, I'm not gonna lie, I don't remember how long that ruck march was. I wanna say it was like a 10 mile ruck march because I remember it was longer than normal, but it wasn't over the top. So they were like, we will give you a bunch of pain pills and you can push through it for the ruck march. If you complete that, you will be able to graduate and you can go to your duty station and you can take care of the ankle there. So I was like, all right, all right, I guess I'm gonna have to deal with that because I don't wanna be stuck here for like three to four months letting my ankle heal while I'm in basic training. So they filled me full of pain pills and I went on the ruck march and I pushed through the entire thing. I did fall back, like I didn't keep up with everyone, but I did the whole ruck march. And they were so impressed that the Sergeant Major gave me the coin for the basic training, like the most, uh, like the, the one that pushed through the most and stuff like that. Which, if you've been through the army, coins, they mean something to an extent, depends on who gives it to you. Uh, it is a whole list of stories as to what you do with a coin, but either way, being brand new in the military and a Sergeant Major giving me a coin, that was, I felt proud of myself. So I went to my first duty station. I got to, I got to leave with my busted ankle and I got to go. And they were still saying, you have a sprained ankle. And I'm like, okay, cool. And that was my right ankle. That was my right ankle. And that one I maybe at the time was legit sprained. So I got to the duty station and it was like, we got there and they were just starting up the unit. So I didn't actually have anywhere to go. So I got there with like two to three weeks of just show up in the morning and then go screw around. Well, I wasn't gonna tell them I was injured then because then I couldn't go have fun. Bear in mind, guys, I was like 21. So like, I was dumb at that point. So I started going out and drinking like crazy. Now, if you've ever been to Kansas, there's an area called Aggieville. And Aggieville has like 140 bars and a long stretch of stuff. You start at one end, you drink your way to, just into a stupor to the end of it. Well, I got all the way to the end of it. And there's a hotel at the end of it with the intention of you would stay there. And if you picked up a girl, you would go there. And if you didn't pick up a girl, you would just pass out drunk. Well, I was drunk. And I felt like I was like a hundred bucks. I felt like I was like a champion. I just graduated basic training. I walked on a busted ankle, guys. I walked on a busted ankle. So I was like, all right, cool. I I'm gonna impress these girls walking out of this hotel. So I climbed a light post all the way to the top. And at the top of it, I told them, look, I can jump. I don't know what was going through my head or why I thought this would impress these women, but I did that. I was like, look, I can jump. And so I did it. I jumped off of, well, my right ankle was still hurt. So as I'm coming down, instead of bracing myself from a big jump like you would, I put all of my weight on my left ankle and I hit it square on. And at that point, that's where I think I shattered the ankle, but I don't, we don't fully know when this kind of thing happened. Completely blew it out. It swelled up to the size of like two softballs at each side of my ankle. It was huge. It com Completely was room, but I was completely drunk, so my buddies just carried me to the next bar. We kept drinking with me hobbling around. So the next day was the weekend. My ankle swelled up. I couldn't go to sit call. I wasn't going to the hospital. So I spent the whole weekend laid up in bed with a busted ankle. And then now I'm putting all of my weight and pressure on the right ankle, which is still injured. I go to the sit call and the, the PA there, the physician's assistant there, he goes, both your ankles are sprained. So you're gonna just have to take care of them like they're sprained. And I'm like, ah, great. Well, at least I'm at my duty station. I can deal with it here. Not a big deal. And so they started having me, before they had healed, go on runs and do ruck marches, which is not what you want to do on unhealed ankles. And it got to, and, and they never fully healed. And I kept going back to the doctor and he would just keep telling me, you've rolled your ankle. You've rolled your ankle. It's just weak. You just have weak ankles. And he wouldn't actually give it an examination, but he would just look at them and see they're swollen and be like, you've rolled your ankle. You have a sprained ankle. So they deployed me to Iraq like that. Now I'm carrying all of this gear on body armor. Uh, they gave me the saw. So I had the heavy machine gun, light machine gun. Um, and I also had to carry the javelin at one point. Like I had all of the heavy gear 
Because I'm built like a truck, guys. Like, a lot of people are like, oh, you're fat. No, you know why I've got a double chin? Because I'm 30. That's why I've got a double chin. I'm not fat, but I'm built like a truck. I'm also not slender, so don't worry about that. I'm the kind of guy that would be, like, in football, like the linebacker and just tackle everyone. I was the guy in hockey, when I played hockey, that would just get into fist fights because I would just knock people out. That's the guy that I am. I'm just a six-foot-tall guy that has just dumb strength, and that's always how I've been. So they loaded me up with everything on these busted ankles overseas. All of Iraq happened, and I can tell you that story another time about the stuff that happened in Iraq, like how I got dubbed the donkey killer, and uh, all the various things that happened, like almost getting crushed by a, much, a giant boulder, and uh, rockets going off over my head. We'll talk about those stories. Let me know in the comments down below which of those you may be interested in. Um, but after I got through the whole thing, my ankle kept rolling. It kept rolling, kept having issues, and I got back, and because our deployment was so crazy, they were like, you can change jobs, you can pick a duty station, and you can get a bonus. So I'm like, look, I like the military. I really, really did at that point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stay in the military and I'm going to change my job to the medical field. Because that way, if I stay in the long haul, I'll have like real world training that I can leave the army with and go do something with. So that, that eventually led to me getting two degrees. And I can tell you that story another time. So I switched over. But before I was able to switch over to the medical field, um, they told me that they wanted to actually do full MRIs and scans on my ankles to see how bad these were. Because I, they saw in my reports that I kept getting them looked at. As it turns out, both ankles were shattered. I had shards of bone in the actual joints and that was causing them to lock up and roll constantly. That was what the issues were. And then it would constantly roll and break off more pieces of my ankle. So I had shards of bone just lodged in my ankles and that was where all the pain was coming from. They weren't sprained, they were shattered. Shattered ankles that I had been walking on because the army told me to. So that led to the first surgeries. So I switched MOSs because once again, they were like, okay, we can do it now, but you're gonna be stuck in the infantry unit for like a year to go through surgery and heal. You can do it at your schoolhouse when you change, you'll be stuck there for a year. Or since you've been walking on them, you can push through and get to your next duty station. We will give you a hospital. So I'll work out of a hospital so I can get taken care of there and I'll work out of a hospital with kind of a desk job. And I'm like, okay. That sounds like the best option. I'll get through. I've already pushed through this far. I'll walk on them for the rest of this. It was like another eight months. I was like, I'll walk on them for another eight months. I'll get to Virginia to go to, uh, to the hospital that I was going to work at there. And from there, I'll get them fixed. So I go over there and I get them fixed. Now, this is where I got a little dumb with my military history. So I went in and I got completely fixed up, got the surgery, took the time off of work, healed up, worked out of a desk, let them heal. And... Three or four months after the surgery, I was coming up on re-enlistment. Now, I am not a guy that likes a desk job. I like to keep completely active. And the desk job was starting to just drive me insane. On top of that, where me and Natalie were living at the time was not a, the best area ever. And we weren't enjoying it too much. Because this is like, so I came back from Iraq, met Natalie. That's when we got married. So at this point, we had been married for like two years. So we're still in that rocky period in the marriage. And we're in an area that we weren't happy with. And I was going insane at a desk job. So they said, do you want to re-enlist again? Um, we will let you pick your next duty station. So I was like, I'll do that. I'll pick Fort Bragg. I'll go over there. Um, I didn't expect to deploy because of the ankles. But I was like, I'll go to Fort Bragg. I'll be in a more active field unit. And uh, I'll be close to where my parents live because they live in North Carolina. So I'll be able to see family again. So we moved to North Carolina. And I got to my unit. And I had... I mean, the people in the unit were great. The dumbest commander in the goddamn world. This is one of those guys that had done the National Guard for 20 years, had no idea how the real military worked, and his insistence was, well, I'm a major, you have to do whatever I say, whether or not it's smart, intelligent, or actually is good for the unit. That's a story I can tell you another time, but let's just say that situation got so bad when we were at, at Afghanistan that he was forcibly removed and fired. You never get fired in the military, and anyone in the military will tell you to be fired from your job, you have got to be the biggest screw-up ever. That was this guy. So anyway, we get to the unit, and... He wants to deploy. He wants to deploy. That's what he wants to do. He wants to deploy. He wants to get out there. And I was like, I don't can't deploy. I just had uh, surgery. How am I going to deploy? What am I going to do with two broken ankles? And he's like, if you sign this waiver, if you sign this waiver and go with us overseas because they needed me, 
I was the ninth person, I want to say, and they needed nine people to deploy. So either, either I signed or the unit couldn't deploy. So he convinced me to sign the thing, and the arrangement was that I would have a cush job overseas, sitting at a desk. I would never go on missions. I, they just needed my body so that they could deploy. It's all they needed. So I signed it. I went overseas. Hey, I'm going to make a bunch of money. Me and my new wife, we could definitely use a bunch of money. Let me do that. Um, so I went overseas again. And let, let me just tell you, that was not a sit at my desk the entire time job. I had to keep loading up with tons of heavy equipment, getting in helicopters that would then hover, like, I want to say three feet off of the ground and jumping out of helicopters to go on my missions. So basically, I tore up my ankles again. I got back and they were like, your ankles are broken again. Guess what? You have to go through surgery again to fix them up a second time. And I'm like, God, are you kidding me? I got, a, I got a promotion out of doing that. I, it worked out for my career, but here's where the problem came in. So I got my career. I had finished up another degree while overseas. I got promoted. Everything was going great. And I get back and my, my ankles hurt. I just want to get like some pain medication, maybe a brace, kind of help them heal back up properly. And they're like, no, you broke them again. You have to go through surgery again. And I'm like, God damn it. Well, here's where the worst part happens. I went through surgery again. And the option at the end of it was you can have a permanent de desk job for the next 11 years of your career to finish your, your, your thing, or we can give you medical retirement. And I'm like, are you kidding me? So I, I made a great progression in my career, but now I have to sit at a desk the entire time. And I couldn't make it a year sitting at a desk without going insane. So I was like, I, I've, I'll take medical retirement. At the time, Natalie and I, we, were ha um, we had a little bit of money coming in from a few other investments that I had made. Um, and, we, and we had the money to, from, from money she had made while overseas, well, while she was at home in France, to go buy a house. So we were like, you know what? I think we can live off of the medical retirement VA and the money that I've made off investments. And I can get like a low level part-time job, maybe go back to work at GameStop as a manager or something like that. And we can just have enough money to live and we can buy our house. We won't have rent, we won't have any of that stuff. And I'll just, I'll be done with the military. And that's what we decided to do. We decided to leave and go do that. And one of our fun things we were doing in the side was actually doing YouTube. We were doing the gaming channel. And then the gaming channel turned into me wanting to do more. So I did the comic channel, which is how you guys have probably all found me. Um, but that's, that's the history of my broken ankles. They are now still permanently broken. I can do a certain amount of stuff on them. I can't do anything crazy high impact or I'll be out of action for like two or three days. But I have built up enough muscle in them and in my legs to be able to go for uh, short runs. I can go rock climbing. Um, Natalie plays tennis. I can't do tennis. That's too much impact on the short and the running. But that's the story of how I broke both my ankles and the military is now paying me forever. So let me know what you guys, uh, what else you guys want to know about YouTube, about my military time, about Comic Storian. I'll do more videos like this while I'm trying to figure out how to do proper vlog videos for you guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Welcome to this channel if you're just finding this off of the other promotion I just did. And I will see you guys next time right here on the Benny Potter Answers Your Questions channel.